crown a champion at Disney. July 30th, NBA games begin a week from Thursday. You're looking at what NBA courts will look like, some intimacy, some precautions. Lisa Salters will join me in a moment with more details on these courts. But first, here's the Lakers' Anthony Davis. I think it's pretty cool um, how to have the, the big monitors where you can have your family, friends, fans, whoever uh, kind of be in the arena. Um, I think that's a pretty dope idea. Uh, I know they're still trying to figure out some things as far as lighting and, and the sounds and stuff, but I think the whole concept of it, the concept of it is pretty dope. The great Lisa Salters joins us from Orlando. Good to be with you again, Lisa. And I'm curious, how's the court set up differently than it normally is uh, to maintain that high level of safety for everyone at the arena? Well, Bucci, the courts really do look nice. We got a sneak peek today. And if you didn't know that you were on specially built courts here in the bubble in Orlando, you'd think that you were in any NBA arena anywhere. An arena, of course, without stands for the fans. Uh, but the courts themselves for all three broad broadcast arenas, they look like this, and they will be exactly the same at each venue. Up to 30 cameras positioned around each court all but three of them will be robotic, but the coverage and the camera angles should really be unique and unlike anything that fans have ever seen before. Team bench areas have been arranged so that players are seated next to each other, but socially distanced, and each player and coach will have his own assigned seat. Uh, the scores table is behind plexiglass, and so is the booth for the announcers who'll be calling the game. For the games I'll be working, That'll be, of course, Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy. Those guys will be at an elevated location again so that they can be distanced from the floor, which is where they usually sit for games. Mm -hmm. And while fans won't physically be present at these games, the NBA is still fine-tuning ways, Bucci, to get them here mm -hmm. virtually. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to those new camera angles you talked about. And good for Van Gundy to be away from the court so the players can't hear him uh, while he's broadcasting. Uh, <laughs> As we saw in the video, Lisa, all three courts uh, have Black Lives Matter displayed on the floor just above the league shield. I'm just curious, how did that af affect you walking out there, and how might others be affected by it? Yeah, well, as a person of color, uh, as a person, uh, it really did affect me. It's something that the league and players both agreed that they wanted to do, to have the words Black Lives Matter on the court. When you see it, Right there along the sideline in front of the scorer's table, it's meaningful, it's moving, it makes a statement. And I can't wait to hear what the players and coaches think when they walk out onto those courts and get ready to play for the first time and they see for themselves those words on the court. Mm. A NBA season like uh, no other in its history. We're looking forward to seeing it again on ESPN and ABC and looking forward to seeing you, Lisa Salters, uh, back at work from inside the bubble in Orlando. Well, as another day passes inside the NBA bubble, more and more people are adjusting to their new surroundings. That includes the Clippers, one of the favorites to win this year's title. And while the league is open to bringing every amenity imaginable inside the bubble for the teams and their families, it will never match the comforts of home. But so far, so good. The league's been great. They, they really have been, you know. Um, They've done everything right, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, when, when you think about that, uh, we're running a village for the first time. Uh, we're doing, league's doing pretty well in city management. There is a lot of stuff we can do here, um, but as far as our health, you know, we, we have an app every morning that you have to do. You're wearing bands. Uh, everybody are, are wearing face masks, uh, you know, when you're out in public. It's been good, you know. You're able to be around the, you know, the guys that you've been missing for the past three, four months. Uh, next scrimmage is just getting in shape, um, getting our team chemistry together, getting the flow, getting the rhythm. Um, you know, that's what I expect us to do. All right, one other note on the Clippers. They will be without their starting point guard for an unknown period of time. ESPN's Malika Andrews reporting that Patrick Beverly left the Orlando bubble Tuesday night for an emergency personal matter, but he plans to rejoin the team in the future. But that date will be dependent upon how long he's gone and a subsequent quarantine once he arrives back in Orlando. 
And the aforementioned Malika Andrews joins us now from inside that bubble in Orlando. Uh, Malika, we know what a defensive presence Beverly is on the court for the Clippers, mm. but what does it mean for the team all around for him being away? Michael, this is this is part of their big heartbeat, I would say. That's who Patrick Beverly is to this team. When they got here and were in quarantine, Patrick Beverly was banging on the walls at 2 o'clock in the morning and yelling out to his teammates, yo, I'm just checking. Is everybody all right? Because that's the type of guy that he is, both on and off the court. He is that vocal teammate. Kawhi Leonard was talking earlier about how over the break they actually worked out together, and that was a really good bonding time for them. And I saw Patrick at practice this morning. He was chatting with teammates. Uh, he was, you know, smiling and seemed to be happy to be there. So he plans to return to this team as soon as he possibly can. And they're already shorthanded as well because Montrez Harrell left the bubble mm. to deal with a personal matter. Also, we'll see how long Beverly yep. is away from his teammates before the season tips off. Malika Andrews there in Orlando. With the NBA set to restart in Florida next week with 22 teams instead of 30, the league determined that voters for its season awards should consider only games played up through March 11th to choose the winners so LeBron won't have an opportunity to continue to make a case for what would be his fifth MVP trophy. That would time with Jordan. The things he's doing at his age, I mean, he's playing like probably one of his you know, best years top team in the West, you know, he the things he's able to do on the floor, especially when everybody was saying, you know, he was washed and he, you know, he should hang it up and all this things. He come back with a, with a dominant performance. So you're 17. He's probably owed a couple when he got missed out on. Obviously a lot of people kind of counted him out and thought he was not washed up, but didn't think he was at a level where he was before. And it seems like he hasn't lost many steps at all, not even half a step. You know, he impacts winning more than anybody in the league. You know, his his IQ, he's the quarterback of both the offense and the defense for us. You know, it's probably the if you're going to choose one one argument um, when you have Tom Brady running the show offensively and Mike Singletary barking out calls on the defensive end, you, you're a dominant team to have, you know, the the best offensive leader in the league and the best defensive leader on the league on your, on your, on, in, in one player uh, is probably the best argument. Columnist Kareem Abdul-Jabbar won the mm -hmm. award six times. Yes. That's the most. Jordan Bill Russell won at five, LeBron four. As for Giannis, you see, big favorite for the award, according to Caesars, at the time of the stoppage. Uh, it's going to be hard to defeat him. The Greek freak is looking to become just a third player to win multiple MVPs by 25, joining LeBron and Kareem. All right, let's talk some football now. The NFL Players Association has agreed to the league's plan to drop all preseason games for the 2020 campaign. That's according to ESPN's Dan Graziano. The union also agreed to an 80-player roster limit for training camp instead of the usual 90. The agreement between the union and the league came a day after the league proposed scrapping the preseason due to the coronavirus pandemic. So NFL Players Association had discussions making accommodations for the 2020 calendar. Here are some key dates to monitor. Rookies scheduled to report to their teams on Tuesday. Quarterbacks and injured players set to arrive on Thursday. From there, the rest of the players arrive by July 28th. And the season opener still set for September 10th with the Texans traveling to take on the defending champion Chiefs. Now to college football, where Notre Dame's athletic director believes this year's schedule should be pushed to the spring amid coronavirus concerns. In a conversation with ESPN's Heather Dinich, Jack Schwarbick said, quote, for Hernandez. Can we get a Mike Trout sighting in our Angels highlight? Hey, there he is. He walked in his first at bat, and then here, got in on the hands a little bit, a little weak grounder to third for the former MVP. More offense, though, from the Dodgers. 2-1 advantage here. Chris Taylor, Yo, Eves, add three to that. <laughs> Deep shot to left. 5-1. Dodgers take the lead. Little freeway series action for these guys. We'll see what happens later with them. A's have won 97 games in back-to-back -back seasons under Bob Melvin. The Giants have not been good the last three years. Under 500 and say hello to Mike Yastrzemski. Remember last year, as a 28-year-old rookie, he had 21 homers in 107 games. Remember, Gabe Kapler era is underway in San Francisco. Mike Yastrzemski, Carl Yastrzemski's grandson, turns 30 in August. 
Looking good again in 2020. A win over the Wizards. All right, as for Lou, left the Clippers in the NBA bubble Thursday. League excused absence for a personal matter believed to be a bereavement-related uh, issue. Then Thursday night, Williams ended up on the Instagram of rapper Jack Harlow at a gentleman's club in Atlanta, which is not a good look, even if Atlanta...